Good afternoon, everybody. It's Katie here at Discovery Park of America, and today we are celebrating hashtag Ask a Curator. So we've got some curators here um, who work at Discovery Park, Jennifer and Lindsay, and so we've got some questions for them. But just for people to go ahead and add or uh, comment different questions that you may have, and just to get our viewers up a little bit and give them time to join. Um, I just want to go over a couple of things that we have going on here at Discovery Park in the next couple of weeks. On September 26th and 27th, we have the Southern Heritage Arts and Crafts Festival. It's free with your park admission, and we have over 40 different vendors that will be here selling their unique crafts, so definitely come out and check that out. And also, the 26th and 27th is ed all educators get in free. So if you are an educator in this area or from Memphis or Nashville, anywhere in the world, um, definitely come out and check out the Southern Arts uh, Fall Fest or Arts and Crafts Fest. And you can come free and bring one guest free, of course, as well. And Leaders Credit Union will be here on the 26th, and so they're going to be giving away some happies to all the different teachers that come in. So be sure to come out next weekend. Um, another thing that's coming up on October 10th is the Discovery Park Cruise In. And so if you have a vintage automobile that you would like to join uh, or to enter into this, it's free to participate. And then, of course, if you're a guest that day and want to see all of the awesome automobiles on display, it's free with your park admission as well. So that's October 10th. And then Christmas is right around the corner. So we are so excited about the Let It Glow Christmas Light Show that opens November 13th through December 30th, and it's sponsored by McDonald's again this year. Over a million lights will be on display, and they'll be synced to your favorite holiday music, so definitely come and check that out. It's great for social distancing. You just stay in your car. It's $10 a car, and you can just enjoy the lights and get into the Christmas spirit. And then one of my uh, favorite presents that we're going to get here at Discovery Park and kind of segues into our interview today is the brand new ag exhibit called Agriculture Innovating for Our Survival. And it's going to talk about the, the innovation of uh, technology and the different things that they use. iPads, drones. It's crazy how these farmers, uh, these men and women, um, are using technology to plant fields and to, to grow crops for all of us to eat. So, that kind of segues into our how do we get these different exhibits and what's a museum curator and everything. So Jennifer and Lindsay, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. So we'll just jump right into some of the questions. Um, we'll start with you, Jennifer. Okay. You are the director of exhibits and collections here at the park. I am. So what makes Discovery Park's collection unique? Okay, I think... Um, probably how just varied the collection is. I mean, you look behind me, we have dinosaurs, we have classic cars. Um, I can see through the window 1800s log cabins. We have trains, we have uh, animals. I mean, it's just, there's, we're able to use these items to talk about so many different time periods and so many different cultures. And I just think it's wonderful that we're able to have all of that just in this one location. Right, and for it to be here in Union City, Tennessee, of all places, you Especially. know, you, you really expect a museum like this to be in Chicago or mm -hmm. New York City, but it's here in little bitty Union City, <laughs> Tennessee. So it's amazing to have all of this here yeah. in this area. So Lindsay, this question is for you. Okay. What type of animals live at Discovery Park? And also tell us what you do here for the park as well. Okay, so my title here is the wildlife educator. So I have a really fun job because I get to go out into the public and talk to a lot of different people. I get to do cool events like this and help educate the public. Um, but the other part of my job is actually taking care of all the animals that we keep in our collection. So we have several different types of animals, including reptiles like snakes, turtles, and lizards. We have a few amphibians. Um, frogs and salamanders, and we have a lot of different fish that are housed in our community tank, which is a 20,000 gallon aquarium that you can see um, in our regional history gallery. And we actually even have a couple of mammals that are kind of behind the scenes. They get to come out for special programs, which are flying squirrels. And you guys have some, uh, you have one animal program that's coming up in October. Can you tell us a little bit about that? We do. We have Operation Wildlife coming up in October, and Micah Seavers from Seavers Beavers will be here presenting that day at 11 and 2 o'clock, and that's free with your park admission. Awesome. And, of course, we're following all social distance guidelines um, for you to come out and see those different programs. 
So did you already tell us how many animals you have here on display? We have around, well not on display, but we have around 80 animals on display. We have a small portion of those that you can see, like I said, in the Regional History Gallery. Um, and those are all Tennessee native animals. So a really cool fact about just the animals that you'll see at Discovery Park, they can all be seen somewhere in Tennessee. Very cool. Thank you for that. And Jennifer, um, this question is also for you. How many objects do we have in our collection here at Discovery Park? Okay, we have a little bit more than uh, <laughs> objects than animals, but several um, more. If you come to Discovery Park, you're going to see. Um, I think now we're at about 13,000 artifacts on display, but we have probably 25,000 additional items in storage. Wow, that's yeah. a ton. Is that like an average for museums to have, or do we have a little bit more, or a little bit less, or just depends? Um, it depends on the size of the museum. Obviously, larger museums, the Smithsonian, they're going to have a you know a lot uh, a lot more than a smaller you know a small town museum. But um, we're different because we're a larger museum in a small town. Right. right. Um, <laughs> but typically, you do have more items in your stores than you have on display. That way, as time goes by, you have um, you have kind of a collect a big collection to choose from to rotate out your displays and show something new. Very good. Well, thank you for that. All right, Jennifer, we're going back to you. We've got another question for Jennifer. Uh, how do you come up with the ideas for exhibits? So for example, the agriculture exhibit, how did y'all yeah. come about with that? Um, with all the exhibits, there are different ways. The agriculture um, exhibit in particular actually started um, from an outside source. We had a very generous donation um, from the Tennessee Soybean Promotion Council. Um, and they hoped that with that money we would upgrade our existing agriculture exhibit to something, um, you know, a little, a little more modern day, a little, more, a little more modern. Um, and it just kind of took off from there. So that's an example of, you know, someone else having an idea um, and coming to us with that idea. Um, it may be an artifact or a collection of artifacts that we have, um, you know, in our personal collection might inspire something or someone has reached out to donate or loan um, their own collection um, might inspire something. For example, we have um, coming up in October 8th, we'll have on display um, an exhibit about campaign buttons. And that's because Randy Anding, who is a staff member here at Discovery Park, he's worked with uh, the security department for several years. Um, he just showed up one day and he, as a matter of fact, has just collected uh, campaign buttons throughout his life and he thought, you know, with the election coming up in November that this might be an interesting thing to display and, you know, if he hadn't done that, we would have had no idea. Um, we wouldn't have had that thought because we don't have any campaign buttons in our own collection. So it could be, you know, something, it could start with the artifact itself or it could just come from someone else. So it's, it's all different, you know, directions that could come from. Yeah, we've had a lot of neat exhibits here at the park. We've had Bodies revealed, Titanic, mm -hmm. but then the ones that y'all have had that mm -hmm. I know have, people have raved about was the Alvin York exhibit. Mm -hmm. And so you and your team were just rock stars at putting that together and everything. So, Thank you. Which yeah. another example, I'm, I can see it now, so it, it sparked my memory. Um, if there's you know some sort of historic event, uh, some sort of anniversary that we can try to tie in an exhibit uh, with. So we have a women's suffrage exhibit um, that will be on display for the rest of the year. And that came about because, you know, this year was the uh, 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. So to kind of uh, participate with that, we developed an exhibit with it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, Lindsay, here's All right. a question for you that I know a lot of our viewers. And viewers, <laughs> again, if you have any questions for curators, be sure to comment and we'll have our uh, videographer read those out loud in a few minutes. So, Lindsay, who is the oldest animal in the collection? So that's a little bit tricky of a question, um, just because a lot of our animals are brought to us legally out of the wild, and since they came out of the wild, it's kind of difficult to age animals unless you know, some animals, unless you know exactly when they were born, and turtles are one of those, unless you know exactly when they're hatched. We do have a turtle that was sent to us from another zoo, and he is actually 20 years old this year. So that's what I'm going to claim to be our oldest animal, but actually some of our box turtles could be a little older than that. So. And which turtle, is he on display? He is on display and he actually lives um, with a red-eared slider, but he is a mud turtle. Oh, and what's his name? His name is Humperdinck. Humperdinck, that's a fun name. He came with that name. <laughs> you can't change a turtle's name. Absolutely not. Humperdinck. Of course. <laughs> okay, so this is for both of you again, and you can answer in whatever order. So how do you go about adding a new animal or an object to your collection? You want me to start? No. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, I'll go. Um, 
if someone's interested in um, donating or loaning us an artifact, um, we do have a process. Of, I'm a part of a collections committee, and we meet once every month. And any offers that we've gotten up to that point, we discuss it as a group. So we, we talk about what the item is, its history, um, does it relate to an exhibit, um, gallery, or a theme that we already have? Um, is it something that maybe we don't have that type of exhibit right now? Is it something we think we can do in the future? Um, and we kind of just throw all that around. Is it a duplicate of something we already have? Um, and we, we really want to be not, not strict, but just careful because, um, you know, different reasons. For one, uh, you heard how many items that we currently have in our storage. I mean, if we, if we said yes to everything that was offered, uh, whether we can display it or not, I mean, that just will add up and add up and add up over the years. Um, so we need to watch that. Um, but then also, it's, it's not fair to the person who wants to donate or loan that item. If, if we're not truly not able to use it and then it winds up being in storage for the rest of its life, you know, that's not what they wanted. Um, so we really want to be um, careful and considerate. Um, and we talk about it as a group and make the decision then, then and there. Awesome. Lindsay, how about you? So we also have people that reach out to us occasionally and ask if we can take an animal that maybe they've been keeping as a pet or that they found in the wild. And unfortunately, we cannot do that. We do not want you to go out into the wild and grab an animal and try to bring it to us. Um, we can't take those. Every animal that we have has to have a permit from TWRA. Um, so some animals that we get are brought to us by them. But if we are just going to add an animal to our collection, one, we have to figure out what animal we want or what animal people want to see. Um, and then we have to make sure that it comes from a reputable source. So making sure that it comes from somebody like TWRA or a reputable breeder, which is what we really like to do is to get those animals um, from a very reputable source. Then once the animal arrives, we have to quarantine it so that it doesn't introduce any kind of diseases to any of our an other animals. If it has any parasites, we have to treat the parasites and make sure that our animal is completely healthy. And then after that, we can um, introduce it into either an exhibit or its new home behind the scenes where it's going to live. So we have a, a process that we have to go through to make sure that we keep that animal and all of our an other animals safe through the process. Thank you for that. So if you have any animals, don't find them in the wild, okay? <laughs> don't take them out of the wild. Yeah, it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited about this question because I think, I think a lot of our viewers are going to be interested in knowing this. So Jennifer, mm -hmm. what is the weirdest or strangest item that we have in the collection here? Okay, I don't know if others will think that this is strange or weird, but it is to me. Um, and it's actually, it's a very small item. It's only about, they're only about this big. Um, in our enlightenment gallery, we have something on display called otoliths. And I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Um, it's the ear bones of a freshwater drum fish. Oh my goodness. Um, and it goes in, the, it's in, you know, their inner ear and it, they, it uh, helps them with their balance. Uh, but there were, are some cultures uh, that saw those uh, as lucky charms. So they made a point to, to keep them and collect them. So we have some of those on display and it just kind of gives me the ebd Ooh, Wow. <laughs> Lindsay, do you have one in the um, regional gallery that's weird or strange or just in general here at Discovery Park? Well, we have a few arthropods that a lot of people find um, a little creepy. I like to call them the creepy crawlies. So we do have a desert centipede. He's Ooh, a little freaky yeah. just because he has a lot of legs. Mm -hmm. And we have some Florida bark scorpions, which um, a lot of people also kind of get the heebie-jeebies yeah. about scorpions. Yeah, so. yeah. That's me. That's me. No, thank you. <laughs> okay, Lindsay, this one's for you. This is okay. also another good one. Okay. What is the grossest thing that you have to do for our animals? So a lot of people think that I have a very glamorous job and part of it is because I get to do really cool stuff like this. The other part that I was talking about earlier, caring for the animals, gets a little gross sometimes. <laughs> so there are days when I am in turtle tanks, physically my whole body in tanks, taking care of cleaning those animals. Um, but honestly, the, one of the grossest things that I do is cleaning our cricket box. Um, and a lot of people don't, un, don't realize that we keep a cricket box, but a lot of our animals actually eat crickets. Um, so we get crickets and feed them and keep them alive in order to feed them to our animals later. And their box gets disgusting. So they're living in there all the time. We have to make sure that, that it stays clean in there to also keep the crickets healthy so that we feed a healthy meal to our animals. 
Um, and they honestly, crickets just smell. They, <laughs> it's a lot of trouble for them, to be honest. Oh my goodness. Now, do y'all catch the crickets or do you get them? You we, order them? we order them in um, and eventually, hopefully, we'll start our own breeding program where we'll be breeding our own crickets so that we are sustaining ourselves on that. Can I piggyback on yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Um, when she's talking about feeding the animals, is there I guess what's the grossest food that you have to deal with to feed the animals? Is we, there a gross one? We only have a few different food sources because a lot of our animals can eat the same thing. So the crickets are one of them. Um, we also feed mice to our snakes, which a lot of people don't like to interact with. Fortunately, we feed um, frozen mice. We thaw them, heat them up for our animals, so we don't have to worry with live food other than the crickets. Mm -hmm. And then we have a mixture of different foods that just smell bad because it's different seafood for our fish. So we have mm -hmm. things like shrimp, clam tongues, different types of fish, that kind of thing. Very neat. Well, thank you for sharing that. All right, we have one more question for each of them. Okay, so Jennifer, this is your last question. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite object in the collection? Okay, that would have to be um, in our military, our lower level military gallery, um, which is hanging from the ceiling. There's a World War II era PT-17 Stearman biplane, um, which just, you know, that item in and of itself is just, you know, spectacular, but it's my favorite because I was lucky enough um, prior to Discovery Park opening when we were getting everything ready um, to be installed here for the exhibits, um, I was lucky enough to be able to fly in it um, before we put it on display. So that's just, that's a memory that I just, I look back on and I think about every time I see it. So oh, that that's so definitely special. my favorite. That is so special. Lindsay, what about and you? It's, it's open oh. cockpit, which is a very, very Oh scary. my gosh, you were like Amelia Earhart. <laughs> Did you wear the glasses? Oh, uh, no. Uh, I may have had some on. I don't know. <laughs> a little bit of eye protection. <laughs> Lindsay, what about you? What, uh, what animal has the most interesting story? So I, we get animals from a lot of different places. Um, so a lot of them have different stories. Like our northern pine snake was gifted to us from the state aquarium, the Tennessee Aquarium in Chattanooga. Um, like I said earlier, we have a turtle that was gifted to us from another zoo. Um, but I think the most interesting story is actually a really good point to it's a good place to prove the point of why we don't want to take animals from people. So um, Fiona is a very popular animal here in the park. She is known for dancing up against the glass. I know she's been on our social media several times. She's one of my favorite animals here. Um, she gets a lot of attention when people see her because she is one of our larger turtles. So Fiona was actually taken out of the wild as a baby, illegally, unfortunately, and someone kept her in their house for an extended period of time. And then eventually she was confiscated by TWRA because she was taken out of the wild illegally. Again, we do not want you to go out and take an animal out of the wild and try to bring it to us. Um, but since she had been out of the wild for so long, she couldn't be re-released. So TWRA brought her actually to UT Martin and the professor there actually gave her to us. So she went through a few different homes before she ended up here at Discovery Park. Um, but I feel like she has a very interesting story because she did actually come out of the wild. And People always think she's really, really sweet and she's really fun to interact with. She's actually kind of a mean turtle. So even <laughs> though she's been out of the wild for a long time, she still holds on to some of those wild tendencies. Yeah. She's not very friendly. Yeah. Well, thank y'all so much for sharing uh, this on hashtag Ask a Curator. Do we have any questions from the audience? Maybe not, but you can watch this. And if you have any questions that you think of after watching it, feel free to leave those comments or those questions in the comments and we'll get an answer for you. Thank you guys. Of course, Discovery Park of America, we are here to inspire children and adults to see beyond. And we couldn't do that without our curators as well. So thank you curators for all that you do. And uh, thank you for watching this. And we hope to see you here at Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Bye.